No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Oh, God, it just won't ever stop, will it? Come on, seriously, this is getting really crazy now. So NASA just halted work on the SpaceX Starship Human Lander for the Artemis moon landings because of the Blue Origin lawsuit in the Court of Federal Claims against NASA. And they are halting work for how long? Until f November! F so let's get into it again and see what this means for NASA's return of humans to the moon and how long the program will be delayed now. In our last video, this one here, we were ranting how Jeff Bezos is really employing every possible dirty and unfair strategy against SpaceX in the NASA human lander drama. First the protest with the Government Accountability Office, which forced NASA and SpaceX to halt work on the moon lander for three months. Yes, the protest was filed in late April and the GAO rejected Blue Origin's claims on July 30th. Then we talked in the last video about Jeffrey Preston Bezos' last dirty strategy, namely suing NASA at the Court of Federal Claims. We were pretty sure that this wouldn't have any direct consequences on the continuation of work on the human lander, but we were wrong. Now NASA again halted work on the human lander the second time, only three weeks after having been green-lighted by the GAO. And how long? Until November 1st! Yes, another two and a half months of delay. So in the end, our friendly Preston here will have managed to delay the NASA Artemis program by almost half a year just by employing every unfair strategy he has ever heard of and using all forms of protest which the US judicial system has to offer. And we are surprised ourselves how many forms of protest this judicial system has. Let's just hope that after this lawsuit there won't be another way how Jeff can block the human lander. At some point I hope there won't be any new legal ways to block SpaceX and NASA from progressing work on the Artemis program. So here is the official NASA statement on the incident. Quote, NASA has voluntarily paused work with SpaceX for the human landing system HLS option A contract effective August 19th through November 1st. In exchange for this temporary stay of work, all parties agreed to an expedited litigation schedule that concludes on November 1st. NASA officials are continuing to work with the Department of Justice to review the details of the case and look forward to a timely resolution of this matter. What we find strange is the voluntary part. So there was no legal jurisdiction yet ordering them to halt work on the human lander, yet they still stopped working on the lander. Wow, this must feel like an easy victory for Jeff right now. NASA wouldn't have had to stop work, but they chose so voluntarily. I mean, I really wonder what went on behind the scenes here and who decided for the so-called voluntary halt. Why would they stop work on the lander so easily, even before a court has reached a conclusion? In an interview with Space News on August 19th, before the release of the case schedule, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said he expected some clarity on the schedule of the case, including any requirement for a stop work order in the next two weeks. Okay, funny. So in the next two weeks, NASA will know with certainty if they actually have to stop working on the HLS, but they already stopped before that, you know, just to be safe. That is some hardcore work ethics there, wow. Nelson added, quote, This is a matter that is out of our hands. It's in the legal system and it's being handled by the Department of Justice. In his opinion, this could mean further delay for the Artemis program, as he also said, quote, The judge could require, in essence, very laborious discovery. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Nelson, awesome. Sounds really enthusiastic and full of energy. I mean, I think the probability is quite high that Blue Origin will lose again and Jeff will be humiliated even more. 
but I also really hope that this will be the last time we have to endure this total shit show of a legal blocking match from Blue Origin's side. Jeff Bezos is really more than a sore loser now. He is actively trying to postpone humanity's progress to become a multi-planetary species. A true space enthusiast as he claims that he is would not employ such unfair blocking practices. I mean I have the impression that right now for him it's just to block SpaceX wherever he can and to delay Artemis as long as he can hoping that by some weird legal loophole he can still insert his pathetic lobby lander into the Artemis program. Elon Musk will be remembered as the man who made humanity multi-planetary and Jeff Bezos could have been remembered as the guy who helped achieving that goal. But instead, he will be remembered as the guy who tried to stop Elon Musk. Awesome. However, we actually don't really have to be sad, do we? Why? Well, because SpaceX just doesn't give a damn about some lawsuits. They just march on with crazy speed, full steam ahead for the first orbital launch of Starship SN20 and Super Heavy BN4. Even though some work still remains on testing SN20 and BN4, there is a high likelihood that we're going to see the launch already in one to two months. SpaceX has the giant advantage compared to NASA that it's not so tied to US politics and not as strongly and easily hindered by some weird lawsuits and protests. Apparently even I could block NASA from working on the human lander for 5 years by filing a lawsuit at the regional court of, I don't know, Georgetown, South Carolina or what. But in contrast, no one can stop SpaceX, like seriously no one. Not even the President of the United States. I got a lot of, I got hairy legs that turn, that, 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 that turn uh, uh, um, blonde in the sun. Yes, the FAA can't even stop SpaceX. If by the time that Starship and Super Heavy are waiting for launch permission, and in the case that the FAA will not give this launch permission, we can really imagine that SpaceX will just launch without it. That's how badass they actually are. They launched SN8 without any FAA approval after all, if you remember. And what happened? Nothing. And we shouldn't forget that SpaceX now has some powerful friends at the US Air Force and Space Force who really want to see Starship succeed. Because the US military already is conducting studies of using Starship as a troop and cargo transporter. So they do have a strong interest of seeing Starship succeed. The FAA will have no other choice than to permit SpaceX to launch. Or of course, SpaceX will move offshore with their Demos and Phobos platforms. This way, no environmental impact assessment of the area around Boca Chica for super heavy launches will be necessary. No one can stop the SpaceX steamroller. SpaceX will demonstrate a landing of Starship on the moon with or without NASA. We are pretty damn sure about that. As it stands now, Yuzaku Mitsawa's Dear Moon mission will still happen in 2023 and by the way 20 finalists have now been chosen by Yuzaku Mitsawa for this Dear Moon mission. So after the Dear Moon mission it will make sense for SpaceX to test Starship's landing capability on the moon. And if Bezos will still block NASA by then because he filed I don't know another lawsuit at the court of Parkston, South Dakota which will force NASA to stop work on the human lander for 50 years then SpaceX will just do it themselves, you know? They will build a private SpaceX moon base if NASA will let themselves be deterred by Jeff's blocking. And where would they get the money from, you ask, to build a private moon base? Well, from Starlink. The user base of Starlink is growing exponentially and will continue to do so until Starlink will generate billions annually in income for SpaceX. An income that by the second half of the 2020s might even surpass the annual budget of NASA of 25 billion dollars. So no matter what dirty trick Jeffrey Preston will come up with next, he can block the NASA Artemis program but he cannot block the progress of human spaceflight as this progress is not linked to NASA but is linked to SpaceX and SpaceX will circle the moon in 2023. SpaceX will land on the moon with unmanned cargo starships 
and later with manned missions and then build a moon base. And SpaceX will do the same on Mars. No matter if some funny guy files 100 more protests at some weird courts or offices or whatnot. Therefore, we shouldn't be too sad. This lawsuit is just a small dent in the grand scheme of things. A small inconvenience which might delay Artemis for a while, but not humanity's return to the moon and not humanity's first landing on Mars. These things are being pushed forward by SpaceX. And make no mistake, this time NASA are just the guys that are booking a ride to the moon with the SpaceX Starship. SpaceX doesn't even need the $2.9 billion from NASA's contract in order to complete Starship and Super Heavy. By 2023, when Yuzaku Mitsawa has his lunar round trip, work on the SpaceX NASA moon lander should have resumed anyways. So either way, SpaceX will land manned starships on the moon in this decade and do the other things, you know the story. So this was again a rant episode and apparently we don't even get a chance to do a non-rant episode anymore because every second day some new insane stuff is happening in the whole NASA Artemis human lander drama. I wish it would just stop. Hopefully the next video then will finally be about another topic. And before I forget it, a friendly person called David Foss who works for imdb.com has put up a few of our episodes onto the site. So now we're actually on IMDb, funny but true. Thanks a lot David. Anyways, so thanks for watching the video and for putting up with all this HLS drama. We wish you a nice day, all the best from Jishuan and me and on to the future.